it's unfortunately it all boils down to the marketing budget of each company and the marketing budget of both the Obviously, the, as I mentioned before, the big pet food companies, they're so enormous, they float on the stock exchange and they, they compete with each other. They, there's the three huge ones. There's Mars Pet Care that, that owns veterinary practices, but obviously it owns Pedigree, it owns Iams, owns Whiskers. Then we've got Nestle that owns Purina, but they also are part share in IBC, which owns about they have shares in about 2,000 veterinary practices in the UK. And then we've got Colgate Palmolive, which owns Hills. And, um, and Hills obviously sponsor everything in veterinary practices. So the marketing potential, of, so as soon as one of these companies becomes sustainable, they start to lose a little bit of income and their investors get off edgy and think oh okay we're not going to invest in them anymore and they're competing against each other so they quickly have to go straight back to where they're going to get their cheapest food from and as far as the raw meat industry goes absolutely the it's their marketing budget is so enormous um i know one of the companies was um sponsored eight well they had 80 million pound worth investment in a year to to produce more of the raw food because when you think about it the government subsidizes the um, meat and dairy industry so enormously in the uk and around the world so it's incredibly cheap to buy the byproducts of the animal industry incredibly cheap to buy the liver and the kidneys which as I've explained now are not the healthiest things to feed our dogs and um, and and anybody can can just unfortunately grind it up um, and sell it as raw food but um, it's it's become an industry that because of this the the marketing power and obviously 